It's been eight months since Joe Para Talks With You was canceled on Adult Swim. It was one of the most comforting shows in recent history, and it will be sorely missed by the fans. I made a video about its warmth and legacy around the same time it got canceled. I'll leave a link to that in the description section below. However, today, the clouds have parted, and the sun shines upon a hidden gem that you had no idea existed a show that came out four years before his beloved cult classic. So if you've been jonesing for more of that Joe Para magic, you're in luck, because today, we're going to uncover an absolute banger of a series, one that would influence all of his projects going forward. Now sit back, relax, grab a handful of chips and dip, and let's take a look at the Joe Para show you didn't know existed. All right, let's take Joe Para's sweet time travel vehicle back to the year 2012, a time before his three season run on Adult Swim ever occurred, a time where he was still developing the Joe Para experience we've come to know and love today. Once we arrive on August 14th, 2012, we turn our attention to YouTube, where Joe has just uploaded a short film called The Perfect Sunday. This short film would become the basis for the series we're here to talk about today, but more on that in a bit. The film is about two friends who go about their Sunday in totally different ways. Nathan decides to have a summer fling, and Joe wants to wash his hands because he didn't get a chance to after gardening earlier that day. You know, Joe Para stuff. Sure enough, Nathan ends up having a fling and going through the ups and downs of a relationship with a married woman. And Joe ends up having a very compelling hand wash with soap he bought from a store. Simple, yet brilliant. You might recognize Nathan Min from Joe Para Talks With You. He plays an obnoxious yet occasionally tender teacher from Joe's school. That character is the complete opposite of the one he plays in The Perfect Sunday. Since the release of that short film, Nathan went on to become a writer for The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon in 2016. He was also a writer on four episodes of Joe Para Talks With You. On his website, NathanMin.com, the first thing you're greeted with is this picture, and the caption, Nathan Min is a serious comedian in New York City. You'll also find a section with some of his live sketches from the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. It was also interesting to visit the comic strips portion of his website. It's just a little out of the ordinary, you know? Here, I'll share one with you. This one's called Inconvenient Hurricane. Then he has this series of comic strips called Tips from a Creep. Let's take a look. You have to see it to believe it. Rub a sleeping friend's eyes to make them see New Year's Eve fireworks in their dreams. A half-clipped fingernail can be used to poke the back of an enemy's neck. If you're alone on New Year's Eve, run your lips underneath a warm faucet. It almost feels like kissing. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you get the sense that this is how he copes with lonely New Year's Eves, you know? It, it's creative. Invite your neighbors to dinner by making chewing noises into the phone. If they don't pick up, leave a message of the same noises. It will be a nice preview either way. Bananas for dinner. Please join for dinner, bananas. Also this one. Walk around town with your arms raised up with an inviting look on your face. It will improve your odds of being tickled. It will. I mean, it's true. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are tips from a creep. The Perfect Sunday was the beginning of a series of collaborations between Para and Min, one of which was called Popcorn and Peanuts, a short film that makes me laugh and further demonstrates their chemistry together. It was made in 2015 but disappeared from the internet until 2020 when Joe uploaded it to his channel. It's about Joe who just made an app called Popcorn and Peanuts, and he's hanging out and talking about it in a bar with Nathan. It's an app that lets the user know when there are complimentary popcorn and peanuts at a local bar they're about to visit. Nathan likes it at first, but after seeing a couple and their baby enter the bar and watching them be delightfully surprised at the free popcorn on display, Nathan turns against the app. He goes on a tear about how technology is ruining society, how it's important to keep the joy of discovering things like popcorn intact. He urges Joe to throw his phone into the river since Siri is basically Skynet. In 2014, Joe and Nathan collaborated on a mini-series expansion of The Perfect Sunday called The Perfect Week. 
It's a series that consisted of seven episodes, one for each day of the week. The first episode, Monday, was released on an actual Monday in May of 2014. And every day that week, a new episode would debut on the YouTube channel, Jash. Jash was a channel, I love saying that, Jash, was a channel founded by Michael Sarah, Tim Heidecker, Eric Warheim, Sarah Silverman, and Reggie Watts. It launched on March 10th, 2013. It was formed under the YouTube Original Channel Initiative, which was a $100 million program funded by Google to bring original content onto Google. The channel was very active and put out a lot of content over the years. In 2017, the company was acquired by Group 9 Media. However, they have been defunct now since 2022. Anyway, the Monday episode starts out in a coffee shop. Joe and Nathan are a little bit down and low energy. Joe notices that the waitress forgot to charge them for their coffees. However, the waitress informs them that the breakfast special they ordered comes with free coffee. They are surprised by this and slowly, a long lost smile appears on all three of their faces. This gives you a taste of what the show is really about. Like how an unexpected free coffee can put a smile on your face. The rest of the week takes our duo through a myriad of events where we learn more about them. For example, Joe is a mailman who ends up helping a tenant out of his bathtub. He grew worried about whether the man was alive due to him not picking up his mail for a few days. We also learn that Nathan is a doctor and a scientist, who one day grows a little too thirsty at work, leading him to a small crisis of his own. We make a pit stop at Nana's house where she's hearing about some good family news. Nana was played by Joe's real grandma, Josephine. The duo also tries to help a friend named Sweaty Eddie, who does Arabian-inspired rap music. He's depending on them to bring chips and dip to his show and grows worried as the crowd demands the snacks that were promised. There's also an unexpected and very random cameo from Vinny Guadagnino, Vinny Guadagnino, Vinny Guadagnino from Jersey Shore. I'm Vinny Guadagnino. It all culminates with a once in a lifetime offer that will change their lives forever. In this series, we can see the makings of what would become the cornerstone of Joe Para Talks With You. That is, a simple premise that invites the audience to slow down and appreciate the little pleasures in life. There's also another thread that you can see through most of Para's work, his grandparents, especially his grandma. She's been played by two different actresses in Joe Para Talks With You, first by Nancy Cornell in season one, and then by Pat Vern Harris in season two. I don't know why they made this change. I hope it wasn't for health reasons. Apparently, the first iteration of Nana, played by Nancy Cornell, was discovered at a fish fry in Milwaukee. Joe spoke about this on Late Night with Seth Meyers. He said of the process, Milwaukee in Wisconsin has really great fish fries. So what we would do, me and Katie the producer, would go to a fish fries at 4.30 p.m. on Friday nights and talk to old women and see if they would be good for the part. And there you have it. But I want to focus on Joe's real-life grandparents for a moment. They seem so special to him. So I dug a little deeper. I found an article from the Buffalo News written by Stephen T. Watson titled, Josephine Para, 93, unlikely star of grandson's comedy videos. I was intrigued. I also had to pay for a subscription to read it because it was behind a paywall. Those tricky Buffalonians. But I did it for you, dear viewer. Anyway, to get a sense of how important Joe's grandparents were to him, we'll read a snippet from Stephen T. Watson's article about Josephine. Until she reached her late 80s, Josephine Para was best known for the white frosted cookies she baked to the delight of generations of her family. That all changed when the Eckertsville great-grandmother was recruited by her grandson, stand-up comedian Joseph Para, to make cameo appearances in some of his comedy videos. Josephine Para played herself, of course, usually interacting with her grandson, but she delivered her lines smoothly and with little nervousness. She had this photogenic face that, according to Joe, would pop on film, said Paul Batt, Mrs. Para's son-in-law. The topper came last year when a crew traveled to the Buffalo area to shoot a special for the Adult Swim Network. Joe Para helps you find the perfect Christmas tree. They recorded Mrs. Para at 92 at her kitchen table for a key scene in the video. She did her own hair and makeup for the shoot. She was as funny, if not funnier, than most professional comedians, Para said of his grandmother. She never liked doing takes of a line more than once or twice. 
The employees and fellow customers at her hair salon all treated her like a movie star after the Adult Swim special came out. She thought it was funny, Bat said. She got a kick out of it, obviously. It was a late-in-life dose of celebrity for Mrs. Para, who died August 5th in Elderwood at Amherst following a brief illness. She was 93 and had lived in her Eggertsville home up until the final weeks of her life. Well, she sounded like a nice lady. And Joe's grandfather, Joseph Para, was a firefighter and a World War II veteran. He passed away in 2010. Rest in peace to both of them. Anyway, it's been nine years since The Perfect Week debuted, and Joe's audience has grown tremendously since then. And he recently released the first episode of his new podcast, Drifting Off with Joe Para. The first episode was about soup, and it was wonderful. There's sound design, stories of soup bringing wars to an end, and a conversation with Joe Firestone about a dramatic incident she had making her own soup. Check it out when you get the chance. You can find it on Joe's YouTube channel. It was also recently announced that Nathan Min's half-hour pilot series called Mason just got the green light at Showtime. It's produced by the same team that brought you everything, everywhere, all at once, and Steven Yoon. And that is where I leave you. Will you be stopping by Joe's channel to check out his idea of a perfect week? I hope so. And I hope you all have the perfect week yourselves. Before you go, don't forget to feed the like and subscribe buttons, some chips, and dip. It would really help my channel, plus you'll know when a new video comes out. See you next time.